yeah. I, I would say there's nuance with the red meat conversation as well. I'm saying this as someone who doesn't eat that much red meat at mm. all. Um, I think there's still nuance within the red meat conversation as well. As, as much as it pains me to say this and to be contrarian, there are a lot of people involved in the studies that have suggested the carcinogenic uh, issues with red meat is you're lumping together processed meats and red meat together. That is just plain false. If we look at the IARC monographs for meat and cancer, which summarizes the data behind the World Health Organization's classification of red meat as a class 2A carcinogen, we see that they clearly defined red meat as only unprocessed mammalian meat while they had a different definition for processed meats. So they made a point to separate the two and not lump them together. And they found a statistically significant 17% increase in the risk of colorectal cancer per 100 gram or three and a half ounce serving of unprocessed red meat per day. And actually, when you account for healthy behaviors, the detrimental effects of red meat consumption tend to fade away. That's also not true. They're well aware of the importance of considering confounding variables. In fact, they lended more credence to studies that adjusted for major confounding variables like smoking and exercise. And after reviewing that evidence, along with the mechanistic studies, it was sufficient to classify red meat as a class 2A probable human carcinogen. And they also identified potential prostate cancer and pancreatic cancer risk as well. 